Let's talk about NFTs from like the high level perspective for a second here. You had a good thread back in 2021, like end of 2021 around, um, and in, in it you said NFTs will grow because it democratizes asset creation. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was an interesting take and kind of want to ask you some questions around that. So maybe my first one is, you know, what are, from your, from your perspective, like what are assets and how are NFTs playing a part in um, like asset creation? Yeah, so from a high level, what is the asset? It's, it's, a, it's a tool that allow you to um, transfer the claim of uh, ownership on economic output across space, across time. So okay. um, every year the economy produces GDP, right? Who owns that GDP? Uh, if you have cash, you can buy stuff. So you own a, a, a piece of that GDP in that sense. Right? It can be exchanged um, to for, for a claim. It's a claim on the economic output. So that's that's why cash is a asset. Um, same thing with, uh, the, for example, real estate uh, the, or the so-called store of value. What, what, what kind of what is what is being stored there? It's a claim on future economic output because uh, you can exchange that for uh, uh, things that you 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 need to you need to buy you need to use that's that's being produced by in the economy yeah so and you so that's on the high level right so uh, any asset um, to fulfill this function of a asset it, it need to the thing needs to meet some criteria. It needs to be in limited supply. It needs to be um, uh, durable, transferable. It needs to have a social consensus that says, okay, we all recognize this thing as a asset that can store some uh, value, meaning some claim to future economic output in it. So if you look at uh, NFT, what is NFT? It's just a hash token on chain, on the blockchain, right? Uh, so then you look at, does it fulfill the criteria that we just mentioned? Can it be in limited supply? You, it doesn't have to be, but it can. You can programmably limit the supply of a type of NFT. Mm -hmm. um, is it durable? Is it transferable? Yes. Uh, it's pretty hard to destroy because it's built on a decentralized databases, you know, and then uh, it can be there forever as long as this database exists. And it's very easy to transfer. Much easier to transfer compared to any type of physical assets, actually, which gives uh, uh, it, this asset more liquidity. And theoretically, there is a price pre premium from liquidity. Yeah. And also... Uh, and the last thing is, is there a social consensus? Now, uh, gold, for example, it, there is a social consensus around it. Um, people recognize, okay, we use, we all agree this thing has value. We can use this as a store of value. It basically is a, like a, a, a database. It's a gold is like a database in, in solid form, right? Um, so, this this a consensus regarding NFT, it's being bootstrapped, right? So that's why you know you 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 see people that put so much emphasis on community, uh, on the so-called Lindy effect, or on you know uh, the kind of uh, social consciousness uh, building effort. Are surrounding NFTs because everybody is trying to achieve that social consensus for their gotcha. particular type of NFT. Yeah, so, that makes yeah. that that all makes sense here. And I feel like what you just outlined was, you know, showing how NFTs can be an asset. And I feel like that begs the question a little bit: like, should it be an asset that we that we build that consensus around? And within that thread that you had put out, you you kind of laid an argument that there is a global asset shortage and that you know, NFTs can fill in uh, for some of this demand. And 
generate that store of value? And I was kind of curious, like, why, why do you think there is this asset shortage and, and why do NFTs then, given the fact that they can't, they do have the characteristics of what an asset can be, like, why do they fill in here? So um, a, a main factor, I would say, um, that is uh, driving a, a global asset shortage is the uh, growth of em- emerging markets over the past 20 years. So you have this part of the world, a lot of it in Asia, for example, that has created a lot of new, like the GDP growth has been uh, very high over the past 20 years. So a lot of the new wealth gets created, but those wealth, like again, the, we talk about the function of the asset is transfer that claim on future economic output across time, right? So when you create a, like a, this GDP, or you cannot all consume uh, today, right? You get it stored for the future. So that needs asset to, to be stored. So traditionally you have real estate, equities, those are the traditional types of a store, like the asset that, that can carry that kind of a time transfer function for your future claims on the economic yeah. front, right? So, so if you look, at, uh, it's, uh, the, why, why the real estate market and equity market in Korea, in, in Korea and China are so crazy. <laughs> the, uh, the speculation and the bubble is on, a different level compared to uh, the, the the speculation in in the mature market, like in the United States, okay. because really? because there is this imbalance between the demand for asset and the supply for asset. Because the equity market is relatively immature and relatively shadow in those countries, right? So um, mo- most of the time, you know, that's that's why everybody is like storing their values in in, in real estate. Yeah. So I think what I'm hearing a little bit is like, and, and you're talking like, I feel like what's going on right now is a, someone in PhD econ is talking to someone, someone who's trying to understand it in very simple terms. Right. And what I think I'm taking away is there's a lot of parts of the world that are gaining economic maturity and have rising GDPs and they need places to put their money to invest their money. And in a lot of those countries like real estate prices are high and equity options are low because their markets may not be as mature as like the U.S. market. And so there's an opportunity here for these NFTs to be a form of asset creation because they're so transferable around the entire world. And like that open that just opens up the market for them to find ways to put their money in. Right. And so, so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying in like the emerging markets are going to buy all the NFTs. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying yeah. is there is, if you look at a global level, there is a supply demand imbalance regarding assets in general. So that creates the opportunity for new asset classes to emerge. Uh, NFT could be one of them. Oh, oh, yeah. and the other sector, uh, the other factor is after the GFC, after the global financial crisis. You actually destroy some asset classes, such such as subprime uh, mortgage securities, <laughs> uh, because uh, those turn out not to be not, not those those turn out to not fulfill the function of asset very well. Yeah. So 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 Interesting. You, yeah. So you you actually you you destroy some asset supply after after the global financial crisis. Cool. No. Yeah. That that was a cool breakdown there. I I think that you know most. Not everyone's thinking about it from such a macro lens as you. So I just appreciated that insight, your take on it. Um, the quote I want to share just from that thread is, it was kind of like a sum, in part of the summary of the thread, you said, NFTs, NFT is democratizing asset creation and producing a new generation of store of value that helped to meet the demand for assets in a new global financial paradigm. So you kind of mentioned after the last financial crisis, some assets, asset classes get destroyed and... And right now we're going through a, a period of time where some new ones are being created and, and being experimented with. You're listening to The Unstoppable Podcast, the go-to place for everyone to learn about the latest innovations in Web3, NFTs, and the decentralized web. Welcome to the Metaverse.